Good morning, everyone. So autumn is well underway now, and we're noticing some beautiful changes around the site as the colours change and the leaves fall. So I hope you're enjoying the, the, the change of season. Now, last week I mentioned that assemblies can be about so many things. <clears throat> Days in the calendar, ideas that we're looking at within school, and sometimes amazing people that we can learn from. Now, I think you'll know this, but a role model is a person whose behaviour, example or success is so wonderful that other people want to be like them. They might be people that you actually know, or they might be people that you've heard about or seen on the television or on the news, and then thought, they're amazing, or that thing that they did was amazing, and you might think, I'd like to, that to be in my life, or I'd like to achieve something similar. It could be someone from the world of science or sport or drama and film or literature. It could be someone you know like a family member or a teacher or a friend. It can be anybody whose characteristics that you admire. Now, I think it's really good and healthy to have role models to, that inspire us. It doesn't mean that we think, oh, we're rubbish, we're no good. I'm not good enough as I am. It doesn't mean that at all doesn't mean we're unsatisfied with who we are or what we've achieved, but sometimes it provokes us into doing new things or developing aspects of ourselves that we might otherwise not have thought about. <clears throat> so this morning, I want to talk to you about a pretty amazing person who I've never met. She isn't related to me and she lived a long time ago, but there are aspects of her life that I think are so wonderful and I'd like to think that I could apply them to my life in some way. So we are heading back about 200 years ago to meet a very special lady called Mary Jane Grant, who was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and who defied social expectations to achieve some amazing things, particularly in her goal to help other people. Now, I very much doubt that you've heard of that name before, but you might know her as her married name. So, so Mary Jane Grant was her, what we call a maiden name. And, you know, sometimes people will change their names when they get married. And Mary Jane changed her name to Mary Seacole when she got married. Now, she was a nurse who was um, best known for her work in helping the sick and the wounded, particularly during the Crimean War. She was also known as Mother Seacole to many of the soldiers that she helped because she took such wonderful care of them. And they looked on her as a bit of a mother figure during the time that she looked after them. And here she is. Now, if we were in the assembly hall, I would get a beautiful PowerPoint with loads of pictures of Mary Seacole. But as I haven't, as we're not in the assembly hall, I thought I'd just get some pictures here. So there she is. She's lovely. And I think here she's either eating or maybe mixing something in this bowl. But this is Mary Seacole. And she was born in Kingston, on the um, Caribbean island of Jamaica sometime in 1805. No one knows the exact date because she used to keep it a secret. She didn't want people to know. Now, her father was, was a Scottish soldier who was stationed on the island at that time. Um, Jamaica was part of, of the British Empire. And her mother was a Jamaican nurse. And she had a sister called Louisa and a brother called Edward. So here she is. As I go into the story about her, I want you to, to imagine her. I might actually upload this so you can see it while I'm talking. We don't know if Mary went to school, but we do know that from a very young, young age, she had an interest in medicine and nursing. And when she was just 12, so like a year seven age, she was helping her mother run a boarding house in Kingston where many of the guests were sick or injured soldiers. And her mother taught her a lot about traditional Jamaican treatments and remedies. And she also learnt loads from other army doctors staying in the boarding house. Now, one of the many things I love about working with children is how much they listen and they pick things up. They're like radars, always like picking things up. And she was just like that. So she was constantly learning and developing her skills from what she saw around her. Now, I think I've mentioned to you before, probably 50 million times, that one of my favourite things to do in the whole wide world is to go on adventures and to travel, explore and look for new things to experience. And if there was one thing that Mary loved, it was to travel. And at that time, it wasn't very really common for women to travel a lot, but it didn't stop her. And when she was a teenager alone, she had taken two trips to England. Um, and it's a fair old way travelling from Jamaica to England in those days. 
And not only was she interested in nursing and caring for people, she also had quite a business mind as well. So she used to travel to places such as the Bahamas and Haiti and Cuba, which is an amazing place, where she bought spices, pickles and jams to sell back in Jamaica. Now, in 1836, Mary married an Englishman called Edwin Seacole in her hometown of Kingston. But sadly, Edwin was a very sick man and died just a few years later in 1844. And then ever after that, following her husband's death, she just wanted to focus on caring for sick people. And then in 1850, she was able to help people um, who fell ill with um, a deadly disease called cholera in Kingston. She um, went to Panama for a few years, and when she returned in 1853 back to Kingston, she didn't stay very long because she heard the news of British soldiers going off to Russia to fight in the terrible battles of the Crimean War. She wanted to help. And so off she went to the War Office in London to request, and she actually wanted to join um, Florence Nightingale and her team of nurses who treated um, uh, soldiers in, in the Crimea. But um, she was turned away. They didn't, they didn't want um, to work with her and several other nurses, but it was not enough to stop Mary. No way. Together with her friend Thomas Day in 1866, she set off to the Crimea in a, a ship stocked with medical supplies. This is another thing that I really love about Mary Seacole. She didn't let the fact that she was initially rejected from this work stop her. She was so convinced that it was the right thing to do that she made sure it happened despite this initial rejection. It's a great quality not to let people put you down, but to think, no, I'm going to do it anyway. So she arrived to a terrible state. Many of the doctors were cold and dirty and hungry and those that were sick and wounded weren't being cared for very well. So she did something very unusual and set up what she was called a British hotel near the battlefields. Now this wasn't a hotel, it was made of a metal sheet, it was a, a hut. Where, but um, soldiers could rest there and buy food, drinks and equipment. And all the money that she made there, she used to help treat and care for sick and wounded soldiers. And a lot of nurses did unbelievable work during um, this time looking after soldiers. But Mary, and this is another thing I like about her, went a step further and she did something incredibly brave. She rode on horseback into the battlefields, even when under fire, to nurse wounded men from both sides of the war. She wasn't just looking after the British soldiers, she looked after both sides. Now, I don't know the story very well, and of course I don't know Mary, um, but to be able to say that, I, I can't say that she was fearless, because I bet she was scared to death, but it didn't let this stop her from going and helping people anyway. That's another um, character, characteristic that I admire. So when the war ended, she ended up with hardly any money, and she was really not feeling very well. She, her health wasn't good. But... Lots of soldiers wrote to um, the newspapers to say, to tell them all about what this amazing woman had done for them. And um, in 1857, there was this amazing charity gala where 80,000 people attended to raise money for her. She received many medals for her bravery from governments in different countries. And in the last years of, 20 years of her life, she um, lived a quiet life and she died in 1881. And uh, she had written a book, though, called The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands. And lots of people read that and learned all about her. But um, I guess to finish off, what I want to just to, to draw your attention to are the characteristics of this wonderful lady. I want to look at her again, actually, as I, as I speak. She was... She really broke lots of what we call social rules, travelling the world, running her businesses, in a time when people, lots of women didn't do that. She cared for people, which was amazing, and I think she's an incredible lady and an inspirational role model. So just to recap, I want to point out again why I think Mary Seacole was wonderful enough to take a whole assembly to you to talk to you about um, and I think that she's, she's got qualities that I would love more of. So number one, she defied, this is, a, this is a phrase, she defied social expectations. She didn't just think, I'll be like everybody else. I'll do what everybody else does. I'll only do what is expected of me. No, she wouldn't be kept in that small box of expectations. She wanted something more. She knew she had loads to offer people and she went for it. 
The second thing is she was curious. She listened and she picked things up and she was always learning and growing. I want to be like that. I think being curious is a wonderful thing. Don't let people call you nosy so that you stop exploring and thinking and developing your ideas. Be curious and learn, learn, learn. Number three, she travelled. Just because I think people who travel are often super interesting and full of wonderful stories and ideas, I think that's something, a characteristic that I admire, a traveller. Number four, she didn't let scary things stop her. She wasn't bound by her fears that made her live a small life. It's a great, great example. Number five, she was kind. She cared for people and put others first. You know how much kindness matters to me. It's one of the most important things in our school. Now, I'm going to put a little clip at the bottom of this assembly so that your teachers can hopefully click on it if you've got time to learn a little bit more about Mary Seacole um, because I think she's somebody worth knowing a lot about and I encourage you to find out more about her. So have a wonderful week and think about Mary Seacole and also think about your own role models and the characteristics that you most admire in others. That's my challenge for you for the week. So have a great week and enjoy your learning and I will see you very soon.